Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be uh, showing you how to convert a uh, Epson XP15000 uh, for DTF printing uh, direct to film. So I'm going to take you over and let's get started. Okay, so we got it out of the box. Now, so this is the printer. Okay, so this is our printer. Um, so right now. We're just going to go ahead and remove all this blue tape. Um, this is a refurbished unit from Epson uh, that Epson sent me. So if you do have one that's under warranty, say something breaks or something um, with your printer, uh, you'll end up getting one of these. So, just want to make sure you rem remove all the blue tape so you don't have any issues. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the printer up and we're just going to go ahead and remove the back piece, the back roller. So let's we'll put that down. Next, we're going to remove a couple screws. So there's a screw at the bottom. We're gonna remove this one. Next we have one uh, on the 
back here at the top. Go ahead and remove that. Then go ahead and flip it back down this way. And you're going to remove this screw at the very end over here. Turn it this way so you guys can see the front. Or what I'm about to do. Okay. Well, um, I got one more. So. So what you're gonna do is go ahead and remove this top piece right here. Go ahead and take that part off. Next, what you wanna do is this side panel right here, you're just gonna push it out and it should pop off. And then once it once you hear kind of like a pop or just you see it kind of slide out, just go ahead and take it off. And we're just gonna take this piece, okay? And so what we're doing right now is we're building a external waste tank and we need to take out Bring you guys closer so you can see. Okay, so you see this black uh, tube right here? You want to go ahead and take it out, make sure not to rip it. But you could just kind of pull it out just gently. It's pretty durable, so I wouldn't worry too much about it, but. Got a little drop. We gotta get that. Okay. But go ahead and pull that tube out. And I did drop something. All right. Well. Hopefully that doesn't cause us issues <laughs> in the future. All right. So now that we have that cord out. This little tube right here, the black tube, you're going to want it to attach it to uh, some external uh, waste tank. So, for instance, I have waste tank, uh, my external waste tank. Basically, it's just a water bottle that I attach some type of a PVC pipe uh, tubing, and you just filter it through. All right, and so we're going to connect this to the little black uh, tubing, all right? I'll show you how to do that. So, I'll pause the video real quick. Okay, so once we got this piece off, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna drill a hole into it right about an inch under where you see um, the gray the gray and the red it's about an inch under between the the middle of those two colors um, just drill a hole right through just enough so that black tubing can fit through and then once you do that you're just gonna pull it pull it through so once you've drilled your hole all you want to do is go ahead and just pull that tube through like that once it's pulled through just go ahead and slide the piece back on
be careful not to rip anything or pull anything else out. It's on. Cool. It's on. So while that's up, we're going to go ahead and screw this part. Right. So that's in. There's one more in the back. See. Okay, so we're just basically we got the two pulled through on that side. Uh, we're just gonna put this piece back on the top that we took off earlier. And all you gotta do to do is just clip it back on, just like that. Once it fits flat, get your screws that you took out and then screw it back in. So one on this side. Oh, and also, before I forget, so I'm going to show you guys this. So this is what your waste uh, maintenance tank is. Um, you're either going to want to get a few of these, or you're going to want to buy a chip resetter. Because when doing this process, you're going to run through a lot of ink, and that's also going to um, cause you to do a, a bunch of uh, uh, printer cleans, which is going to make this... Um, uh, run up the, I guess, the the amount of uh, cleanings you can do with this. So, um, either purchase a few of these, but the best the best bet for your money is to uh, get a chip resetter. Because then, when you, when you have a chip resetter, I'll show you guys in a different video. Um, all you do is go ahead and pull it, put it on the uh, maintenance box, and it resets it. So. So there's that. We got one more piece to attach back. And it's going to go right here in the front. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video real quick. Okay, so now, now that we have that, uh, the printer all set back up, now we're going to go ahead and actually plug it in and turn it on.
So since this is a refurbished unit, I am going to let it run through the uh, first initial setup at least one time. Uh, just because I had an issue with my other refurbished unit. So, so far everything looks like it seems to be working fine. So once I, once this finishes, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, shut it off. Okay, so everything looks to be good. So what we're going to do, so once it gets to this point, oh, let me see if I can okay. take you guys down there. Okay, so once it says like installation starts, install the ink cartridges, what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and unplug it. And all we want to do is make sure that the print head um, is loose. So this carriage right here um, that slides back back and forth. You just want to make sure that is loose, okay? All right. So actually, let me see if I could do this. Okay. So I turned the camera around. Looks like it seems to be better. Um, so from here, there is a screw right here that you're going to want to remove and one on this side that you want to remove. Okay. So we're just trying to remove these rollers right here. Um, so it's just two screws. Uh, they are, uh, they do have like a metal, um, piece behind them make sure that piece doesn't drop so I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew it Okay, so once you get the screws removed, next, okay, so once the screws are removed, we're going to want to try to try to get this piece out. Might take a couple tries, but you know, once you have once you have both sides out, then you're just gonna want to. Make sure not to mess with this, it'll cause you issues. Okay. Cool. So that's how you remove the rollers. 